is it difficult to not overemphasize the need to, to cover for extended periods of time, or is that just, just keep pounding that, pounding that? No, I mean, that's a part of what we do in, in, in practice. I mean, we'll go into 707, and even though we're not rushing, you know, the D line, Coach Hoverson will put an emphasis on our scramble rules, not only offensively, but defensively, and that's something we're going to do every day. Coach, um, you know they're going through a coaching change right now. You, you have any any experience playing against a team that you know uh, substituted a head coach in the middle of the season? In 20 years, um, <laughs> I'm sure I have. <laughs> I just can't remember any right now. I'm trying to think back when Mangino uh, was was let go. Um, you know, there's going to be some chaos there. There's going to be some some um, selling effect with Clint. I mean, he's he's been there for a while and. He's done a tremendous job. You know, he, he knows what it takes to, to win at Kansas, and, and he'll have a, a great insight on how to get those kids motivated for this week. When you look back at the film from last year, what, what was the biggest thing that jumped out to you? We were able to hold up out at the corner position. Uh, are you talking to us or are you talking? Well, just overall what you saw from, I guess, from, from what you guys. From what did. we've done, I mean, I thought we, you know, with, with the adjustment we had to make on the outside, not having Daryl, uh, I thought our kids performed very well. I know we gave up the one deep ball, but that was a mental lapse, not a, a technique or athletic uh, deficiency. So I, I was pleased with what we did. Kansas seems to have a couple of those home run plays, big time plays like that for touchdowns. Is that something you guys need well, they're, they're, what they're doing is they're trying to get the ball to their best players. And at number three, you know, he took that uh, that stretch, is what we call it, up the sideline, and he has enough ability to take it the distance. And, you know, they've got some home run hitters. I think the wide receivers are very capable. I'm, I'm not saying that, you know, their numbers aren't where they need to be, but I'm saying those guys are very good as a core uh, group of guys. And, I mean, they're going to be a challenge because they're big, they're fast, and, you know, they catch the ball in space. Coach, with uh, Icky and Terrell starting, um, the depth behind them, I guess, where's that at, and how do you like the progression of some of those guys? Well, I mean, we, you know, Jalen Myers is coming on pretty pretty fast, and uh, he's a young man that's getting his mind mentally prepared, he's getting his body physically prepared, and, and it's just going to be a matter of time where he's going to get way more reps than what he's been getting. He played a little bit versus Oklahoma, but uh, well, he's a kid that is just growing, and I think Ricky Rump is, boy, he's had a quiet uh, fall camp that you know probably as good as any of the other kids that uh, it's going to allow us to if we need to go that direction get him on the field as well. It seemed like with Icky you guys didn't really need to knock any rust off. I mean, is it just because he has so much game experience he's able to just jump in and, and be effective right away? Well, he's a fifth year senior. I mean, he understands what we're you know what we're trying to do schematically. Um, he understands verbiage. Uh, you know, so the communication is. You know, it's where it needs to be. Uh, he's a young man that played with great confidence last year and did a very good job for us. So he's familiar with this conference. He's familiar with the wide receivers because this is his third time through. And, um, you know, having him has been, has been a great uh, asset to the defense.